going. I will pass you over to Anita Watts. Hi, Anita. Hi, hi, how's it going? Okay, a little bit of housekeeping just to get us started. So this event is being recorded and all attendees will be muted with their cameras off. However, you can submit questions in the question and answer bubble. And we hope to get to a few of those when there's time at the end. Um, and a link to the recording will be distributed after the event as well. So um, my name is Anita Watts and thank you very much for joining us today. I am an energy advisor on the Optimising Power at Work program and today I'm going to be chatting to you about heating controls. I hope you're all going to become a master of controls. Um, I hope you find that it's something um, that will be useful to you at work and maybe also for, for your home. So we only have a few minutes so let's get into it. So heating controls keep our offices and our homes at the desired temperature without wasting energy or causing any overheating. So today we're going to look at the local heating controls in your work area. So the dials and the buttons that you use to control the temperature. So not any kind of building management system that the facilities team might use, and not any timers or programmers that might control the heat in the whole building or anything like that, or when the boilers turn on and off. Just the dials and buttons that you use to control the temperature locally to the space that you actually work in. So we asked you in our most recent heating survey if you agreed with the statement, I fully understand how to use the heating controls in my work area. And it turns out that 57% of you don't agree with us at all. And a further 14% were kind of neutral on it. So I would say that comes in around sort of maybe a bit over 70% don't really fully understand how to use the heat controls they have at work. So a first, a few things to acknowledge. Um, not all of us actually have access to any heating controls in our workplace, and that's usually, but not always, the more modern buildings. They have this sort of centralised climate control. Um, we have taken out the not, a political res um, not applicable responses from the survey as those that don't have any dials to twist or buttons to press to locally control their heating. And secondly, as much as I would love to comprehensively cover all the different heating controls that are out there, we, we don't have time, I'm afraid. And if we did, I really don't think you'd stick with me to the bitter end anyway. So therefore, we have chosen to cover the most common ones, namely room thermostats and thermostatic radiator valves. It's a bit of a mouthful that, so they're sometimes shortened to TRVs in the industry, but we'll just call them radiator thermostats. So we have room thermostats and radiator thermostats. And we're going to look at how they work and how to get the best from them. So I'm hoping some of these look familiar to you that you have either at work or at home. The benefits of carbon is that they are commonly used in lots of our offices and, and at home as well. So while a radiator thermostat is a control for one individual radiator, um, the room thermostats, then they control possibly like a, a group of radiators. So they could control a set of radiators in a room or they could control other heat sources such as underfloor heating or warmer events. Okay. But other than that, they work in, in a very similar way. I would also say that it, in your home, the room thermostat kind of talks to your boiler as well and it'll tell it to switch on if the home is below the desired temperature and importantly switch off when it reaches the desired temperature. So your boiler's not working if your home's already at, your, at, at the temperature you want it, so you're saving energy there. Um, and it'll work along with any programmers and timers that you will use in your own home to keep the heating on at that, during that time. So you can see the room thermostat there are usually um, numbers on them in degrees so this one looks like it's about 18 degrees while the radiator thermostats they're usually numbered something like one or zero to five or sometimes they go up to six or they have little tallies that correspond to to the to the numbers so you can see on this one the little arrows pointing to five so that one's set to the to the max um, maximum heat and this one's different. You can see that there's, um, it's actually not a thermostatic radiator valve. It's not a really radiator thermostat. It's actually a manual valve. So it doesn't have any numbers on it and it doesn't have any events on it. Okay. And they do tend to be smaller than, than thermostatic valves as well. So if you've got these, they're, this is not what we're we're going to go because really these can either just be on or on and you have to manually operate them as well. Unlike the thermostatic radiator valves that have an automatic um, control of the heating. So, 
On the radiator thermostat, um, the numbers that you see don't actually correspond to a precise temperature, but rather to a level of comfort. And you can use the, this little table here to, uh, as an approximate guide to convert to degrees. But it will be through trial and error, really, that you'll find the setting that, that, that meets your needs. You can see the, the little air vents on the radiator thermostat. And there's the same on the room, room thermostat as well. So inside there, there's a sensor that detects the temperature of the air around them. And the radiator thermostats then, they shut off the flow of heat to the radiator, to that one radiator, when the room gets warm enough. So the temperature sensor senses the temperature and closes a valve to reduce the flow of hot water into the radiator. And it's the same for um, room stats, only this will be for a pump or a valve that goes to lots of radiators potentially. So if you set it to about 19 degrees as the desired temperature, um, it's usually somewhere between two and three on the numbers on the radiator um, thermostat. And then the radiator comes on in the morning and it puts heat um, out until it detects that it's reached the desired temperature. So if the temperature is 16 in the room, then the radiator is on, 17 on, 18 on. Whenever it detects that it's reached the desired temperature, 19, it turns the radiator off by closing the valve. Okay, but then at that point, um, if the temperature drops at all, then back down to 18, then it comes back on again and the water flows back into the radiator and brings the heating um, and brings the room temperature back up to the desired temperature. So how can we best find the ideal setting then? That will get us to the desired temperature um, that we, and we call this the, the, the sweet spot, okay? And again, like I said, it's a bit of trial and error to find out what, what you need, but this is basically how, how to do it. So um, we start by setting the thermostatic radiator valve um, between two and three. And if the room is a little bit below the desired temperature, then um, we, we turn it up half a notch or half a setting. Um, if the room is above the desired temperature, then you can turn it back down. So put it up a wee bit if you need to, or down a wee bit if you need to do, okay? But we need to wait about one hour for the temperature to actually stabilize in, in the room to, to adjust. And once we find the one that, that works for us perfectly, then we encourage you to place a small sticky green dot on it to mark your sweet spot. And this will make it easier to check the setting is at the sweet spot in the future. Um, and this is where you leave the radiator thermostat to make sure your room stays at the desired temperature. You do not need to turn it up if it's cold or outside. The radiator will simply stay on longer to reach the desired temperature. So set between two to three, the office should stay somewhere between 19 degrees. If you set it much higher than that, then the space could get too hot. And if you set it much lower than that, the space could be too cold. And it's the same with the room thermostat. It can be a bit easier actually to, to, as it's marked in degrees, but it still can be a bit of trial and error to find the setting that actually meets your needs. But again, we encourage you to put a little sticky green dot on the spot that marks your sweet spot on these as well. So just a few things to, to note. Um, while the rooms we work in are usually set somewhere between two and three or, or 19 degrees, um, areas can be, other areas can be set lower and this can really help to, to save energy. Corridors are, are a prime example of that where people are just walking through the, those areas um, and you can set these to as low as one, one to two. Okay, and in fact, the contrast allows you to register the warmer temperatures in your office and actually provides a greater feeling of comfort. And also then rooms that are not often used, you can actually set them to frost protection. That's the little star. So it's quite equivalent to about sort of seven degrees. So it's not turning off the heat mirror, it's still kind of maintaining the, the, the fabric and, you know, preventing any damp issues or anything in there. But they're ideal for like storerooms and stuff like that. Okay, so again, corridors and rooms and areas like that, you could put again a little sticky green dot at that lower setting, but it'll also be their, their sweet spot. A couple of things worth noting then um, is that the radiator can actually feel cold to the touch even when the heating's on in the building. And that's if the room has already reached the desired temperature so the radiator itself has switched off. So the rad will warm up again if the temperature drops in the room and it's still working. It's in fact, it's still working very well. It's doing exactly what it should do. Also be aware that turning the thermostat up high or to maximum will not heat your area any faster. The heating will just stay on for longer and the room will thus get hotter, potentially uncomfortably hot. 
if you were to come into the cold space on a freezing winter's day, it, it might be reasonable to turn up your thermostat, you might think, but actually that won't help you feel any warmer or any more comfortable any quicker. And the reason for that is the thermostat has no control over how quickly your room heats up. Um, all it does is it detects the final temperature. It's kind of best to think of them as a, like a temperature temperature limiter. It allows the heating to be fully on until the set temperature is reached, at which point the thermostat will turn off the heating um, until the temperature drops again. So turn your, your thermostat higher than the desired level will therefore allow the system to overheat the space, potentially making it uncomfortable, um, making it too warm and also wasting significant amounts of energy. Overheat in some areas of a building could also mean that there's a reduced heat flow to other areas and that could potentially make some of your other colleagues in other areas cold. Something to keep in mind is the solar gain that comes into a building as well. So rooms, particularly in the south side of a building, some can sometimes get a lot of sunshine. And this will add to the heat from the radiators until the thermostat senses that the, you know, the, the room has reached a set temperature and it turns the radiator off. But the solar, the solar energy, the solar gain will still come in and heat the room and it can actually get, get hotter than that. Pulling blinds can help um, sometimes with that. But we also need to think about the fact that computers and people also produce heat. So all that gain is coming in, into the room. So again, if the heating is set to the desired temperature of 19 degrees, the space will reach higher temperatures, um, but the heating rods in that space will, will be off. If you find the room is too warm, and this is the only place where you can get any comfort, then the first thing to do is actually to check to make sure that the radiator has gone off. And you can do that simply by touching the bottom of it. And if it feels cool, then they go off from the, from the bottom first. So th that's a good check. So there's no benefit in turning the thermostat down um, from its sweet, sweet spot. It's not gonna um, help a at all because um, there's no more heat being added to the space. Um, it's also a useful check to, to make sure that the radio thermostat is, is still working. Now, if you were to turn um, the stat down and not remember to put it back to the sweet spot before the end of the day, there will be no heat in the radiator the next morning, even though the heat in, heating is on. Um, and that could potentially mean that you and your colleagues would be cold the next morning. So it's probably best not to turn them off, just to leave them at the sweet spot. <laughs> Having said all of that, when it gets hot, that's when our building's heating system, our cooling systems, I should say, begin to kick in, or we, we might actually open a window. Um, and it's entirely natural that, you know, you open the windows when, and you get fresh air, it's all good too. Um, just keep in mind that if the room cools down a bit, the thermostat will sense that, and it'll bring the heating back on again. And you could actually be cooling the room as fast as you're heating the room, and then all that heat's gone to waste. So after all I said about leaving them at the sweet spot, this is the one case where it does make sense to turn off your heating locally before you open a window. But really important is that you remember to put it back to the sweet spot when you close the window. Okay, and the last point I want to make really and, and to note is about letting your radiators work to their potential. So if they're blocked by furniture or curtains or files or whatever, then the heat can't circulate around the room and the room can be colder and it can take longer to warm up. I know that space is limited in offices, but as best as you can, try to keep the radiators clear, move objects you know, a few inches back and let the heat flow. So you know, the worst case scenario would be that you know, your acne is and then she'll later around the, around the radiator and the warmer stays close to it and the radiator actually thinks it's nice and warm and it actually turns off. So not ideal. Okay, so in, in summary then, um, the idea is that we find our sweet spot um, by turning it up a little bit and down a little bit, we find the exact spot and then leave it at that setting to allow the thermostat to automatically regulate the room's temperature. And then we put a little sticky green dot on it so we can spot it next time. Um, we turn off the heating locally using the thermostat before opening a window and then return it to the green dot when you close the window. And then we keep the radiators clear of any furniture, curtains and files, etc., to make sure that that heat can circulate around the room. And just a couple of things to, bear, to be aware of is that the radiator will cool down when the room has reached its desired temperature. Turning it up to max is not going to warm up the area any faster, but it may make it uncomfortably hot and it can reduce the heat flow to other areas. And if you turn it off and don't put it back, it'll mean it could be cold the next morning. So 
that's how I'd become a master of controls in your workspace and hopefully that might be of some help in terms of using your controls at home as well. Um, you can see um, if you, hopefully there'll be lots of little dots around the place, little green dots helping you to keep your rooms at the desired temperature without overheating the space or wasting any energy. So that's me for, for this week and hopefully you'll join us again next week where my, my colleague Stephen will be presenting instead. So um, we'll have a look now and see if there's any questions we can answer in the next in the last minute or so that we have. Yeah, thank you.